seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Oh, brother, welcome back to another episode of Blank Canvas. How is my BK fam feeling? I hope you guys are feeling a lot better than I am. I just have to say, Spotify, Spotify, count your days. Without going into too much detail, y'all know Spotify has been the bane of my existence ever since I started this podcast recording journey. Now, am I extremely thankful that they made Anchor and that they allowed me to get started? Absolutely. But if I could detail the amount of headaches and problems that have come from starting with Spotify, you guys, you guys don't even begin to imagine. So there was a little hiccup right when I was getting ready to record, as I usually can still record, even though we're hosted with a different platform. And of course, with all their new updates and changes that they are consistently doing, if they are consistent at anything, it is that they're not consistent. They're not consistent with certain programming and sticking the things that people love and that they need. They're not consistent with things that make them great. But hey, they're trying to build. They're trying to be better. So who cares? All right. This will probably be the last. I don't want to say that and then I have more problems. Hopefully this is the last set of issues that I have with Spotify, okay? Anchor, that's now called Spotify for podcasters. Spotify as a whole, I'm sick of you. I'm sick of you. However, I want to still give you your flowers. Thank you. Because Blink Canvas would not be here if we didn't start from you. And we all got to start somewhere, right? Okay, moving on. So because it's been such an interesting way to start the podcast, I am like in a whole different zone. Something that I wanted to talk to you guys about was the whole Diddy and Cassie situation. And if you've been living under a rock, that's the only way you don't know what's going on. These allegations have been coming out about Diddy for years. There's lots. I'll just leave them at that. Because Diddy's a billionaire. So, you know. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly for everything, except for the stuff that actually has video evidence proof. Everything else, allegedly, allegedly. But there's been a bunch of rumors about him and things that he's done. And I want to stick strictly to the domestic violence part. So I see a lot of people victim blaming Cassie. Uh, Well, there's two things. There's like the side, like we told you she wasn't lying. And then there's a side that's victim blaming that tends to happen more often than not when it comes to domestic violence. That is a sensitive topic here at Blank Canvas. But I want to say this quick reminder to you guys. If you have gone through it or you know someone that has gone through it, save your judgments, your snarky comments, your unwarranted, unsolicited opinions, quote unquote advice and or shots you're throwing at the victim, save it for yourself. Because what is wrong with y'all? Do y'all really enjoy kicking people when they're down? Apparently y'all do. What is going on? Okay. Um, Let's also examine some of the facts really quickly. They say, and I'll say allegedly for this, that when they first met, Cassie was 17, he was 37. 17, 37. Enough said. If you don't see your problem with that, bless your heart. Okay, moving forward, there isn't any excuse. I don't care what the age gap was. I don't I don't care what the power dynamic is, because there's a whole power dynamic with him having more money him being able to pay people off. Hence what he tried to do with the video from the hotel where he was assaulting Cassie. Okay, he tried to pay. uh, Let me say allegedly, just in case they come out and dispute this. Fifty thousand dollars to have the video destroyed. But little did they know that the video, this is what they're reporting, that a copy of the video was also given to Cassie. Come on, whoever was on the staff that did that, you protected your life, so your life wasn't ruined. I hope you got to keep the 50000 honestly. And you helped us a girl out. Thank you. Thank you. A win, win, win all the way around, right? So the videos come out. Of course, they can't press charges because... So much time has passed that even though he did it, it's like, well, we can't get him now. Oh, darn. I feel like everybody knew that. You know what I mean? I just felt like 
different agencies and law enforcement who were coming after him who aren't on his payroll were like, um, we're gonna, we're gonna, we got bigger fish to fry. So did he harm her? Yeah. Is there anything we can really do about it? Nah, time has passed. Let's give her a civil suit. Let's move on. Right. I just want to, I want to remind everybody that domestic violence is not a, a one size fits all kind of thing, right? That dress is not going to look the same on you as it looks on me. Okay. And every situation is different. I would even go so far as to say every domestic violent, like every relationship that has domestic violence isn't, isn't the same. You could date somebody who was physically abusive or whatever. You could date another person who is physically abusive and that whole relationship dynamic could be completely different. Please kill the why didn't you leave? I don't know how many times we have to say this. It is not a black and white situation. Y'all stay with people for less. Like y'all not getting beat up or anything. And I don't want to say y'all, the people who do, because my my BK fam, we're pretty amazing, aren't we? I love us. But there are some people, and I don't want it to seem like an attack either. So that's why, you know, I want to change that. But there are some people who will stay with people for less. Like let's add violence let's add money let's add i know people don't want to hear this so they can't wrap their mind around to it but love like i think y'all be forgetting that's the whole mind conundrum of it all you are being physically harmed by somebody who say they love you by somebody who say they want to protect you by somebody who say that they want to invest in a relationship with you like this one no situation ship you know what I mean? Like this was a, and even if it was, I'm just saying, but this is a full blown relationship. And the person who was supposed to protect, provide love and care and look after her is the person who was harming her all along. I mean, hello, is that not a little mind fuck? Can we not have a little more empathy, a little more compassion, a little more grace? Maybe, Maybe that's hard for people, so maybe they can. But I really wish you guys would educate yourselves, not just my BK fam, anybody who's listening to this. Even I refresh my memory. I try to update my knowledge on what are the stats of today. I can't live off the stats from like 20 years ago. Is that good to compare? Absolutely. But how prevalent is it now? Domestic violence has gotten worse, all right? Used to be one in four, it's like now one in three. To be honest, and that's just of the cases we know, I would even go so far as don't be surprised if it's every one and two. Like you are going in the grocery store, the person behind you in the checkout line, and this is not literal, this is an example, they could be one of them. Your your cashier checking you out, she could be one of them if you aren't going through self-checkout. I mean, because aren't we all at this point? They pretty much have no lines open in any stores, aren't we all? I just wish that we as a society and we as humans could be a little more kind and loving towards each other i'm very grateful that cassie is in a new and healthy that i know of relationship she's a mommy she's a wife her current husband literally ran a whole marathon for domestic violence i think i'll have to go back and check it but i think they said he raised fifty thousand. the irony right fifty thousand fifty thousand he either raised fifty thousand or a hundred thousand I'm not sure on the amount so y'all can google the amount that he raised but he raised a decent amount and th- even if it, it's not even about the money it's about we love the way that man loved Cassie period before we even knew the horror that she experienced from Diddy and for that man to run a marathon and express his love and support for her in that way, is that the only way you can support somebody who's been through it? Absolutely not. But how beautiful, how, um, I don't know if intimate is the right word, but that's pretty deep. Um, refrigerator, don't be rude. I'm trying to record and I have nowhere else to go right now. So y'all are going to hear that little ticking thing in the back. Okay. But, um, how it's intimate in a way like it's just beautiful it's intentional it's very intentional and poetic almost to love and support her with something that comes to be able to love and support her with a situation like that um what else can I say about it I just I just really want to leave it with can we be better human beings can we do better can we try our hardest to be a little kinder can we all try to do research on how common and often it is? 
Like there are financial reasons why people don't leave. There are emotional reasons. A lot of people don't have anywhere to go. Like everybody be like, well, just go stay with family. Listen, y'all think Diddy the only one, but y'all got Diddy's in y'all families. Y'all got Diddy's in y'all friend groups. Y'all got y'all y'all might be dating Diddy right now. And I don't mean literally Diddy. I mean, a version of Diddy. Like everybody's so surprised if there is not a same level of outrage at your local level in your house to protect your babies, to protect your children, to protect yourself or to protect a sister, a brother, cousin, anything, a friend, a neighbor. There's not a same level of outrage like it doesn't really bother you that much as it bothers you about Cassie and Diddy I may have a slight inkling that you only care because it's Diddy right and I wish we just kept that same energy for even the regular people who we know and I don't mean go up and harass people because when you help anybody in a domestic violence situation it's a it's a dangerous thing hello the person is already violent so you have to know that if you are willing to help even if it's as simple as giving advice your life could be in danger I don't want to minimize that point because I'm encouraging you guys to help and I am. But please be aware of the serious risks that come with help with helping victims of domestic violence. And the biggest thing I can say is that they might go back. Don't it take y'all a while to break y'all soul ties from toxic lovers? Yeah. Theirs is the same, but a little deeper, a little more scarring and a little more... I don't know the way to word it because they're not mentally damaged, but the damage that was done to their mental is crazy, right? It's all you literally you lose who you are as a person. You have to relearn you. You have to try to get your body out of survival state. That's hard enough. That's hard enough for any of us. Imagine and domestic violence on top of that. And then does anybody ever think about like how fucked up it is that you're not just being like abused by anybody right it's a person that you love and then it's a person that's in your home like what like i come home to you i i roll over next to you the kids may run and jump in your arms kind of thing like do people think about it from simple pers- like perspectives of that like hello what a mind fuck that is and all of that is a combination and you still got to figure out how to get out and then it, when you get out <laughs> when you get out people say well why'd you stay what took you so long why didn't you leave sooner and i would just i would really ask anybody who's hearing me bk fam or not let's pause refrain from asking that question let's think if that's the first thing you think, hey, sometimes you can't control your thoughts. Keep it to yourself. And then ask yourself, if it was you, would you want somebody asking you, why didn't you leave sooner? Why didn't you go ahead and leave? Why now? Why didn't you fight back? Because I think sometimes people have the conclusion of, well, why didn't you fight back? You're damned if you do. You're damned if you don't. Okay, I fight back. Makes them even angrier. Now what? Oh, and let me preference this with saying domestic violence is not just a man and a woman. Women, you can be abusers too, okay? So don't be out here hitting on me and either. Like, it goes both ways. Let's keep our hands to ourselves. I feel like we got to go back. The America, we are... I know other countries just laugh at us. I would. If I was in another country, I would be like, what is that shit show over there? Oh, that's just America? <laughs> can they top it? Every year. Every year, we find some way to do it. And it's not even our society's fault the whole time. Like, do we play a major role? Absolutely. But is it all of our fault? No. Some of us are just here hanging on for dear life and just praying to survive another day in America, okay? But I wish we could have a little more empathy for each other in general. I think if we started with that, there is a reason God said, um... Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Most important thing is you got to love yourself. Because you can't love other people if you don't love yourself. And then the next most important thing is love your neighbor. Because if we were loving each other more, we'd have more compassion, more empathy, more grace. Hell, you may give some people some mercy, you know? (laughs) Like I should do X, Y, and Z, but because I'm a good person, we pass grace. Give me a little mercy right? Like, 
God has it set up a certain way for a reason. And I just wish, I wish we all did better. I'm talking to myself. Like there are situations that I'm sitting here as I talk to you guys, I'm reflecting with myself and I'm thinking I could have done better when he came to this situation. I could have been more mature when he came to this situation. I could have supported somebody who was going through an abusive relationship or something better. And don't think that it happens to just adult. When I got to college, the amount of girls, and thank you for all the ones who were brave enough to share their story, the amount of girls that I came across, no matter the race, where they came from, anything, the amount of girls that experienced domestic violence before the age of 24 was crazy. I was like, y'all were in high school dealing with this? Like, it's one thing to be in a family and like you grow up in the house with it, like the child to see it or the child to experience it. But when I just, my heart broke thinking about it romantically and thinking it starts that young. It can start that young for a person. And I'm using girls as an example because the stories that I heard were girls that were sharing it. But I, I don't want to gloss over the fact that domestic violence happens to men all the time. And they may be frowned upon because it's like, you're a man. You should assort your authority. You should be violent bad. Ba, da, 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 da. Nah. Nah. There's a better way around all of it. And somebody's got to be willing to break the pattern and the cycle. And we all need to do better. So I guess what I'm going to end this episode with, since it was such a conundrum to get you guys an episode anyways, but it's me and I love you guys and then I'm going to do what it takes to get you an episode is that I want us to be a little more loving, a little more caring. And the next time you see a domestic violence case, please try your hardest not to let your first thought be, why didn't you just leave? Why didn't you leave sooner? Or what did you do to deserve this? And if those are, check your heart and put yourself in their shoes and think about what the first set of questions you want to be are, why didn't you leave? What did you do? And so forth and so on. And then the next thing I would say is that the people who aren't currently going through it, let's support somebody we know that is or has been. Because it takes years to undo the work that was put on them. And when I say the work, I really mean the damage. And they are not damaged people. People who have been in abusive relationships, they are not damaged people. It's just that the damage was bleeding from the other person on them. And you just, and you can't escape something like that without, without having some scars of your own. But they're war wounds. To everybody who survived their war wounds, they're your battle scars. And I'm so sorry that you had to have them in general. But I am so, so grateful that you made it. And all I can ask is, when you feel the time is right, and when you feel encouraged to do so, share your testimony. Reach out and help somebody else who's gone through it. Share your knowledge to show how prevalent it is, okay? Speak up and speak out if you want to, if you want to. You do not have to because sometimes just surviving those relationships is the best people can do and the only strength they have left. And I completely understand. And Mickey is riding with you either way. So I love you guys. I have no idea what we're going to talk about next time, but I can't wait. All right, guys. Bye.